So can you see my screen? I'm trying to share it on a slide with processes and methodologies. Is that what you can see on my screen? Yes, yeah. okay. Thank you very much. So welcome everyone today. And today <clears throat> I'll be walking us through um, processes. What is the process? Why are processes important to us as business analysis professionals? You will hear me often use the term business analysis professionals because business analysis is practiced by a whole lot of people beyond people that have the job title business analysts. Project managers practice business analysis, change management, uh, organizational change management specialists practice business analysis, product managers, um, product analysts, there are lots of people. And like I told you, based on, um, like you saw in our first presentation, you're actually practicing business analysis in the work you do in your organization, but probably you didn't know. So I would, I would, I want to use business analyst. I will use the term business analysis professional. So we'll look at processes and um, how, and some applications very quickly. We don't have so much time, but let's see how much we can do in that time period. So can somebody tell me what they understand by the word pro process? What does when, when you say process, what comes to mind? How we, um, somebody is asking, okay, I'm not. Yeah, you get the recording. You've always gotten the recording after each of the session. Okay, a series of steps, steps, how to go about things, I love that. Um, I'm looking out for more responses. Um, a chain of activities, ways to do things, yes. I like that um, way to go, way to do things. How to get from point A to point Z? I love that part. A set of activities to achieve a goal. That's the best definition I've gotten. Steps by step ways of achieving a goal. I love that. It's not just all about step by step. You must have an end goal. There must be an objective you are trying to achieve. So. Um, my so my next slide and thanks guys I that means we understand what we are doing here what we are talking about here so the simplest um, definition of a process I have here is a series of actions of steps of activities of tasks that you will take in order to achieve a result to achieve a goal to achieve an objective you don't just wake up and randomly start doing things whenever we engage in one activity or the other we we, there's, there's a goal or there should be a goal in mind, right? And that is the idea of process. And we can relate with this in basically everything we do in everyday life. Um, can someone give me an example of natural processes, like processes around, around our environment, processes that's even going at like, I, I need examples of processes. Let's, I don't want to talk about business processes for now. Let's um, talk about the processes we see around in our environment, because everything, food preparation, I love that. And I have an example, <laughs> process of cooking. Yeah, cooking jollof rice is a process. Oh yes, thanks. I think we have only cookers in this class. <laughs> getting to church on Sunday, thank you very much. There are a series of activities you want to do before you get to church. Good driving, educational pursuit, Having a baby, oh yes, because the process of even creating that baby from procreation to the baby in the stomach, um, all the building activities that happens, the entire human existence, I love this. I love this. Everything around us is built around process. God built the entire universe around process. Um, the Holy Book will tell us there is a, there is a um, seed time and harvest time. And a process governs, principle and processes governs everything that happens around us. There is a growth process from infancy to adulthood. You don't, somebody, you don't give birth to a baby today and they become an adult. There is a process from infancy to a toddler, to a child, to an 
to a teenager, to a youth. Somebody says asking a woman out. <laughs> yes, some people don't plan. <laughs> yeah, so everything around us, even the fact, the, um, the tree you see today that is fully grown with a fruit, there was a process to get to that point. Someone had, you had to plant a seed, um, a seedling, it had to germinate. There was a process of germination. It had to have the right condition to germinate. So everything around us typically is a pro have process. We see process going on around us every day. Yeah, so um, basically in very simple terms here. So a process is a series of actions that take you from one step to the other. It might involve taking in some input, taking in some ideas, some raw materials, but at the end of the day, whatever you are doing, you are mixing up your activities, your actions with raw materials, with ideas, with information, to be able to get you to an end goal. And um, so I don't know if we've heard about, if we've heard this term, trust the process. And this still takes me back to the fact that everything around us is governed by process. And if you follow, the right process, not the wrong process. If you follow the right process, you are sure of getting to your destination. You are sure of achieving the right goal. And this same principle, we apply it in business analysis. We apply it in project management. We apply it in what in, in organizations today. If you go to organizations, they do have what you call business processes. And what is this business process is helping them to do? Okay, before I get to the um, business process, let's take a very simple process of preparing a meal. Somebody gave us that example at the beginning. At the end of the day, you want to be, your objective is to prepare a meal, to get um, a meal that is nutritious, a meal that tastes good, that will give nutrients to your body. But you have to start from somewhere. You need to define your goal as it were. So we're looking at the customer order, um, process or a food ordering process. Somebody comes and makes an order. I want jollof rice. I want um, bread. I want I want tea. And that's the end goal. Okay, please show this previous slide for a minute. Um, is the one talking about trust the process, right? Okay, you will, you will get um, the recording. So we need to move faster because there's a very um, practical example I want to show us. We don't have all the time today. So let's move um, more very quickly. So for you to be able to get a, um, a, a well-prepared meal as your end goal, you need to be able to define exactly what you want, list how the ingredients you would need. If you need to go to, the, um, to, if you need to go buy the ingredients you need, you have to include that as some of your activities and steps. You buy your ingredients or retrieve it from your storage as the case may be, and then, go into the preparation process. And I, I, I'm sure that even in the preparation process, there is a sequence. There is a step that has to come before the other. You can't put in the last step before the first step. So there is a sequence to achieving that prepared meal and you need to follow that process. So this is a simple process we can all relate to because we all prepare meals and eat in our homes today. So the next slide, let's now bring it home to businesses because here we are professionals and we are helping businesses enable change. We're helping businesses achieve their objectives and the organization. And when you are looking at an organization, you are trying to define an organization. You can define it from various perspectives. You can define it from the what. And the what is what, what, what does that organization exist to do? You can see that from their mission statement, from their, um, from their vision, vision and goal statement. It tells you what they are in business to do. You can also define an organization from why. Why are they in existence, which is very related to the what, right? And like I said, the mission statement, their vision and goals, their strategy document will tell you all that. However, when you want to understand how an organization achieves their goal, you would have to go look into their processes. And that is why processes are very important to organizations. So simply, every business entity that exists today, has they do have business processes. It may be documented, it may be undocumented, it may be in somebody's head, but they do have the how, the how they achieve their goal. And one of the key, one of, one of the 
very one of um, one great value you can add to an organization as a business analyst is documenting their process. People would reach out to me to say, oh, how do I begin to gain experience? How do I get hands-on experience? You can start right in your organization. Even your departmental business process, you can begin to document it. And it becomes a training document for new people, for even existing um, employees. It can also become a, a, a basis for process improvement. By the time you map out your process, you begin to see inefficiency and begin to make recommendation to your supervisors on how you can improve the efficiency, the effectiveness of your work. So a business process is a collection of tasks and activity, basically business operations and actions. And it involves human beings, the employees that are involved in driving or executing that process. It may involve materials, raw materials if it's a production process. It may involve machineries, it may involve systems, technology tools, and other input you can think of. And it's designed to create value, to create or deliver value, which is the end goal. Every organization is looking to meet a value, is looking to deliver or create value to their stakeholders, which can be internal or, ex or external stakeholders. Um, do I have any questions at this point or do I proceed? I think you should proceed for now. Okay. So I'll continue now. So having that, I, I believe we all understand what a business process is. And can somebody just give me, I need um, examples. What business processes are you, do you currently execute in your, if you have that understanding that activities and tasks you do today in your organization are business processes, just tell me the process you are involved in. I need us to, I, I'm eliciting this feedback because I want to understand if we actually know that we are all insurance process. Thank you. That is a process. Tendering process. Yes, the procurement, SIM provisioning, systems audit, staff. Thank you very much. Recruitment. Yeah. I speak to your customer. Yeah, you're a caterer. The process of preparing that meal, the process of collecting order from your customer is a process. Contact center process. Thank you very much. I love my participants today. You are so on point. So we need to understand that in, our, in an organization, buying home, very good. In an organization, we have different types of processes. And um, let me quickly run us through that. So we have three types of processes in a typical business organization. We have the management processes. We have the core processes. You can also call it the value stream of the organization because those are the processes that create or deliver value to their customers. Then you have the support processes. So let's take each of these um, one by one. The management processes are those uh, management and control processes. That's where you have, those are the processes executed by the C-suit <coughs> folks. And it's more of um, developing strategies, driving that strategy, monitoring and evaluating the performance of that strategy at that high level, maintaining, um, coming up with policies that would help them achieve those strategies, you know? So those are, those are what we call management processes, very up there. And this process, you have it in different organizations. You have the same process. You have most organizations, no matter the industry, no matter the business they are involved, they do have management processes. And it's very similar. It doesn't really differ from organization to organization. However, for the core processes, this is the value creating processes. This is the processes that keeps the organization in business. This is the processes that the management team or the management processes are controlling to ensure they create value, they execute their strategies and create value to their stakeholders. So these core processes will differ from organization to organization. For example, um, a key core process in the insurance industry will be the um, the, the underwriting process, the claims process, those are core processes in the insurance industry. In the education industry, you would have the curriculum pro management process, the process of um, delivering um, classes or lectures to students, that becomes a core process. Um, I, can somebody in the health, anybody in the health sector, can you tell us what your typical um, core process would look like? 
Um, what other industry can I think of right now? Finance industry. For example, somebody mentioned the loan process. So in, in the finance industry, they, their business is um, giving out loans, attending to resident administration. Thank you very much. So that's a, a process, attending to people in the world, administering medication, good. Um, for the financial industry, can somebody give us one or two example of core processes? Thank you, oil and gas, you have the drilling. Yes, that is peculiar to that industry. So what I'm trying to, account opening, very good. What I'm trying to make us understand that these core processes are usually industry specific. You don't have them in every organization. Thank you very much for me paying customers. Now let us move to the support processes. So these support processes are called enabling processes. They enable the core processes. They support the core processes. They make sure that the core processes happen seamlessly. And you would also see support processes across industry. They, you'll see the same, you, if you go from industry to industry, the support process does not even, doesn't differ so much. So for example, you look at um, system IT, for example, you will say what of um, for a company that is involved in IT in developing software. Yes, their core process might be software development. However, they need IT infrastructure in the organization to be able to effectively develop and deliver those software. So let's have it at the back of our mind that management processes and support processes, you find them cutting across different industries However, the core processes are usually unique to a process, to an organization. And it's these core processes that helps them create value, that helps them deliver value to their customers. And anytime you have a business re-engineering or business improvement process, they usually prioritize and focus on the core processes because those are the customer facing processes. Those are the processes that keeps the organization in business. That doesn't mean they don't, um, they don't re-engineer or improve the management and the support processes. But if you were to prioritize, if you are being an organization today and you are supposed to do a business process re-engineering for the entire organization, you can't, you can't execute all at the same time. I would recommend you prioritize reviewing the core processes before um, the management and the support processes in that. I have an example here, but I, I think I will skip it because I took a lot of time explaining that, but let me just quickly run through this. So you have a food, a restaurant business and the management processes, which are the guiding processes here, you plan the business, you determine regulatory requirements, you develop a marketing strategy, you design business processes and the capabilities, you establish the corporate policies, you um, plan how to communicate with all your stakeholders. Now the core processes is preparing the food, serving the customers and providing delivery services. Those are the core, though because it's a restaurant business, you're in business to feed your customers, to make sure your customers are satisfied with your food. So that's your core processes. However, you would have the support or enabling processes which would involve um, HR, making sure you select and recruit the best caterers, the best food um, service people, IT, if you need IT to run, to take orders, to collect payments and all that, you will need an IT team that will provide you with that support. You might have um, a team, a facility maintenance team that will maintain the equipment you would use for, um, to provide your services. So let's quickly take it, let's talk about process modeling and process analysis. And can somebody tell me the difference between, is process modeling the same thing as process analysis? That's my question. If not, um, what's the difference? Anybody that can help me with that answer? Why I try to wipe my blood? Helping client modeling follows analysis. Okay, and the reason I'm asking this question was that I struggled a bit with um, both terms when I started my career, but as I grew, I came to understand they didn't mean exactly the same. So I just want to, I want to know if you know that, if they, what you think, what, what your take is, are they the same, are they different, and what's the difference? 
okay, I'm not getting feedback. That tells me we, I have a lot of tip. process modeling is the use of flowchart to show graphical illustration. Thank you, Adeda, for you need to model before you analyze. Good, not the same. Okay, good. And I love the definition of, um, um, I didn't see the name, but process modeling is graphical. Yes, so you might have, you might have your process in your head. You can, there are different ways to represent a process, but when you model a process, you are representing it in a visual, in a graphical format. And you are trying to, because research has shown that people learn better or understanding um, is, is more effective when you, you use visuals, you use, you use graphical illustrations. So the process to model your process is just you drawing a mapping. You, another word for process modeling is process mapping. You are graphically showing, telling the story about your process, sequentially telling us that this process would um, come before the other. So it's a visual representation. And what we have here is an example. Harry, can you help me take off? Um, I don't know who. Some, I think somebody tried to make a mark here. I don't know who. Um, okay, let me see how to do that. You can continue. I'll try and get that off. Okay. So the, for, to model your process, you are visually um, representing your process. And there are basic symbols we will use. We, we're not going to go into details here because we take a lot of time to do this in our 12 weeks training. So you have um, a rectangular box that would uh, um, depict a process or a task or an activity. You have a, diagonal, a diamond shape that is used for decision-making because sometimes depending um, um, on a scenario, you can have an alternate path. So you use this diamond to show those scenarios. Sub-process, you use this to, um, to point to or to depict another existing process that interfaces with the process you are working on. You have this um, symbol for your start and end. You have this shape that shows you um, if you are using a document in your process, you want to be able to represent that. You also have this shape showing if data, maybe you want to make reference to data. And then this one tells you that there's a, maybe that you are, you are mapping out a systems process. You want to show that data is stored or retrieved from a database. You want to use this symbol. So in modeling your process as a BA, you could either use a flow chart or you use what we call a swim lane. So very quickly, a flow chart is just a picture, it's just a visual showing the separate steps in a sequential order. It doesn't tell you who does what. It just shows you from start, you have to source a vendor, you have to shortlist the vendor, request for quotation, you know, and then place your order and end. It doesn't tell you who exactly is doing what. However, if you want to go into more detail, so if you want to model your process, it's okay to start with a flow chart. However, for you to do, if you are moving on to process analysis, you'd want to do more. You want to use a swim lane. It helps you understand more who the stakeholders are. So if, um, the swim lane diagram is a bit different from the flowchart because it then shows the relationship between the activities and tasks and the role or the, 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 the responsible person, the responsible team performing that activity. I hope we got that. So for the flowchart, you don't have, it doesn't show who does what. It doesn't show the, the role. It doesn't show the team or the department responsible for doing. It only shows you what is being done. Then when you look at the swim lane, it begins to show you who does what. So it gives you more information into the process. Um, next, so now process analysis, different from process mod modeling. We've established the fact that they are not the same and truly they are not the same. But process modeling is the basis. It, it, it's your starting point when you want to analyze a process. Because what um, visualization helps you do, it helps you identify gaps and you begin to ask more questions when you begin to analyze. So when you're analyzing your process, you're asking lots of questions. You are trying to understand how the process works. You are trying to identify areas of improvement. You are trying to remove waste. You are trying to increase efficiency. That's when um, what, what, what you do when you're analyzing a process. And for me, basically, as a BA, when I get to any organization, any industry, or any new initiative, what I try to do first is 
process modeling and analysis. And what that helps me to do is to understand the process very quickly. As business analysts, one of our key attributes is that we have to be quick learners. And you cannot learn from like, you have to find techniques and tools that help you learn. And one thing for sure that I have used and I've recommended to my mentees to use and have not failed them, process analysis. In process analysis, you're asking questions. Where is this process performed? Why do, we, why do we perform this process? What's the objective? What's the goal? Who are the people? Who are the stakeholders involved in performing this? What are the resources they use? What are the input, the output, the documents, the data they use in performing their processes? Is there a particular time of the day this process specifically are performed? Those are the kind of questions you're asking when you are doing process analysis. And there's a technique, a very uh, popular technique we recommend and we train our users, um, our, our students to use when they are doing process analysis. It's called the CIPOC um, technique. So basically, the S stands for suppliers, the I stands for inputs, the P is the process you are trying to analyze, the O is for output and then the customers or the beneficiary of your, of your process. Okay. Um, so again, so um, the CIPOC um, technique is used to understand at a very high level your process. It gives you a very high level um, understanding of the process you are looking at, and then you can begin to drill down. And for you to analyze for that, you still apply this um, cyber technique to your individual activities and tasks. And I'll show you how you do that. So let's look into more details. So when you are looking, remember there are four components in your cyber analysis, there are four information um, buckets you are trying to populate. So when you are asking, um, this, for the suppliers, you're asking who are or what are the suppliers that provide input to your process. You're looking at the roles, the employees, you're looking at external entities. It could be customers, it could be vendors, service providers, it could be regulators. Um, you're looking at functional units, you're looking at systems and applications that could actually form as input um, into your process. So when you're, also, when you're looking at inputs now specifically, you are looking at those things that trigger that, that you, you typically use to trigger your processes. It could be emails, it could be calls from your stakeholders that serve as input. It could be information you gather from the email or the call from your stakeholders that you would use as an input for your process. It could be a document, it could be a template, it could be a policy, it could be a process document, it could be forms, it could be transactional documents like invoices, like receipts, like um, goods delivery note, like mention, it could be a, um, a claims form. It could be a policy document. And I'm trying to mention as many transactional documents that I know. It could be a report. Again, um, a, an input to your process could be a periodic event. It could be a time of the day. It could be um, when you receive a report at the time of the day. Maybe there's a daily a scheduled report that, that does come at a particular time of the day. It could also be the receipt of it. It could be a goods or a service that forms as input into your process. It could be a bank teller. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. So um, now we are looking at it. So we looked at the first side, the supplier and the input. Now let's also look at the customer and the output. And it's very similar to what you have on the other side, right? Very similar. It could also be um, you're trying to identify the entity enjoying that service? Who are you trying to serve in your process? What goal are you trying to achieve? So, and again, the same output, it could be the same, it could differ. I'm just giving us examples. So that these are the kind of things we should be looking out for when we are analyzing our processes. For some people that are on, are, are, um, that are on our WhatsApp group and our Telegram group, I know I shared a template that you could use to um, begin documenting your process. And this should provide more insight into how you can use that template. So this is an example of a CIPOC, um, a process that has been analyzed using the CIPOC technique. So in the middle here, you see the process. And um, you, you see it also blown up down here. It's basically the goods received um, process. So you receive goods, you book it into the system, you notify accounts, that you've received the goods account to then do what you call the three-way matching for those that are accountants, you are matching the 
customer invoice, the purchase order, to the goods received note. And then if there is no variance, if everything is in order, you go ahead and make payment. So if you want to analyze this process further, you understand that um, the supplier to this process are the, purchase, the purchasing department, because you will need the PO. A purchase order was issued at some time earlier before the goods were delivered. You also need the goods supplier because the goods supplier will be coming in with their invoice. And the input here, like you see, is coming from um, the purchase order, coming from the purchasing department, the sales order, which is the goods supplier was the one that made the sales, is coming with his documentation. And all of these are serving as inputs into the goods received process. And at the end of the day, there's an output when um, the, the process or whoever the role involved in this process, the output you would be getting at the delivery notes. When you receive a good, you are supposed to show evidence that the goods was received. And most time you generate what is called a delivery note. You would be updating your stock record because um, there was a start, there was an opening stock. When you receive a goods, your stock record will change. So you need to make that update. So your output is also that your stock um, level is increasing. For the guys in, in um, the finance department, uh, there's a remittance advice. So because you've done your three-way matching, your supplier is good to go, you issue him, you pay him and issue him a remittance advice. And at the end of the day, we are also trying to match this, our output to receivers or to the customers or the stakeholders. So the delivery notes will go to the accounts department because they need it for their three-way matching. The stock record will go to the stores department. They need it to show their stock. And um, the remittance advice is going to the supplier because he needs to be aware that he has been paid. So this is a good way. If you are trying to improve this process, you are trying to map out the goods received note. The sidewalk technique is a very good technique for you to be able to um, visualize all this. In one view, you have analyzed your process. And this is a good, so if you are trying to go to your stakeholders to, to perform a dissertation, sidewalk technique is a very good way of preparing ahead of your meetings, you know? You do your first level, you articulate your understanding of the process by doing a cycle. Then when you get into your workshop, your, um, your meetings with your stakeholders, you're facilitating that workshop, that you have something to trigger, to prepare the minds of your stakeholders or to even begin to draw out the right information you need. You don't have to have it all figured out when you are starting a dissertation. You do your document analysis based on um, existing processes, what you know, you document it to the best of your ability, make sure it's making sense, and then go into um, your workshops with your stakeholders and then flesh it out. They then give you more information that you have missed. So someone is saying I should go back to the cross-functional diagram. You can always get those sam um, samples of it online. I don't know if you have any question around it because we need to move. There's a just, um... for Lashad, I hope you are good. But you can go online, go to Google and just type swim lane diagrams and you would get lots of options. Now, let's quickly talk about the application of processes. So can somebody tell me um, what, from what you've seen so far, what are the benefits of process modeling and analysis? What can you begin to do as a business analysis professional? What can you begin to do with your um, with the knowledge of process modeling and analysis? And I will tell you what I've used it to do in my 13 years of working. I will tell you I'm very practical. I've, I've used it. I'm not putting what I made up in my head or what I saw online, it's something I've actually used. I'm not getting any feedback. Identify inefficiency, thank you, helps to see value and non-value activity. Thank you, Fumilayo, I love that. Determine how value can be added. Good, understands the whole process, big picture thinking, process review and improvement. Oh yes, you can use it. Yes, checklist for your value. Oh, streamline your processes, identify risk. Thank you very much. Process enhancement. Now, I'll tell you some of the things I have used processes for. And um, I'll show us just a few examples. So you rightly said you can use your process to um, improve. You can use process. You can use those techniques to improve and re-engineer your process. Eliminate bottlenecks. Yes. 
Again, processes are used to develop methodologies and work approaches. And we're going to see that very closely because as business analysts, one of the things um, you have to learn to do is that whenever you have a task, you have a new project, you have an engagement, you need to sit back and think of the best work approach, the best methodology that would help you achieve um, business outcomes. Again, you remember the fact that at the definition, um, when we started, we saw that processes can help you, processes are activities and tasks that help you achieve a goal. And for every time you are working with your stakeholders, there's usually a vision, there is a, there is a, there is a goal, there's an objective. So you then as a stakeholder, have, you, you as a business analysis professional, after you understand what the problems are, when you do your needs analysis, you then need to take a step back and ask yourself, what are the steps I need to take? What are the activities I need to do? What are the techniques and tools I need to use to, be, um, to make sure I achieve the objective of my stakeholders? So process, understanding of process would help you. Also, you use your process to, um, you, you, when you look at um, in, in Agile, you talk about story decomposition, story mapping, and epic. It, they're basically applying the principle of um, process because when you are mapping your processes, you are defining sequentially the action or the customer journey step by step. So process mapping is um, the, the principle, it, it, it employs the principle of process modeling. When you also look at process decomposition, you are trying to break down your process to the granular level. We have different types of processes. We have, um, okay, I don't want to go in. I don't want to confuse people. I won't go in. That was another um, kettle of fish entirely. So, but you apply the principle of process um, modeling in decomposing your stories. We're going to also look at um, how to come up with your functional requirements, your user stories, your test cases from a process. You use your processes to identify your stakeholders, to identify roles, systems, forms, reports, you know, all those attributes around your process. You need to understand them. You're doing the process mapping, preferably a swim lane here now helps you identify all that. Again, another thing I've used process analysis and process modeling to do is to prepare a budget for an, for an organization. And some of my former colleagues that are here can attest to that. So there was a project to um, move from traditional budgeting to zero-based or activity-based budgeting. Because I had done a process re-engineering project and we had fully documented the end-to-end -end process for that organization, I was able to leverage that to help them come up with an activity-based budgeting. We're not gonna go into details here. You also use your process modeling to do skills analysis, um, sorry, skills and competencies analysis. So on the, when, you are, when you are looking at your current state and your future state, what are these changing? You then begin to analyze knowledge, what are the new learnings um, the stakeholders need to have and all that. You also, from your process, from your process map, when you design your future state process map, you can use that to prepare job descriptions. You can use that to update the organizational structure because when you do projects, a lot of things change. But sometimes if you're not experienced as a BA, you would not understand the fact that one little activity you are doing here is affecting other parts of the organization. But as you mature as a BA, you are expected to have that big picture view and typically do what we call a change impact assessment to understand the other areas that your project also affects so that when you are implementing changes, you don't lose sight of those other areas. Um, you can use process for your training and communication plans. Oh yes, I have used this. We're not also going, going, going to go into details here. We're gonna look at how um, developing methodologies or how process modeling Process, um, process analysis is used to come up with methodologies and work up with because we will use this a lot as business analysis professionals. But first, let's look at um, how we can break down a process. We can look at a process from different perspectives, asking questions. We can use it to come up with our user needs and requirements. And I will show you an example. So um, for you are looking at your process. The process contains a whole lot of things. If you ask the right questions, 
you'll be able to identify functional requirements in your process. And basically, functional requirements are your activities and your tasks that you might be performing manually and you are trying to digitize that process. It could even be an actual, um, if you do have a system existing and through asking questions, through understanding what the business does, you're able, you able to elicit more functional requirements. You're able to elicit functional requirements from the pain points, from the challenges of the stakeholders during the process. For example, a stakeholder may describe to you their process. They will tell you, oh, I process, I process um, say sales invoice. At the end of the day, I print out a report. But when I print out this report, I need to put it on Excel. I need to manipulate the data on Excel before I'm, it's ready for me to send to my manager. And he tells you, I spend lots of hours to prepare that report. That is a pain point. That is a requirement already. So as a BA, you are looking for how to make that life easy for that, um, that customer or that stakeholder you are working with. How can you, is that, um, is, does the system, current system, does it have the capability for them to customize that report to suit the need of the stakeholders? Does that stakeholder really need to export that report and begin to spend time manipulating it? It could also be a knowledge gap. Probably the system can actually be, but they don't know. But right now they would have to export that report and then spend time. That, and that time is costing the organization something, time they would have used to do other value adding tasks. When reviewing a process, you can identify the data that is being used. Is it adequate? Does a processor have all the data, all the information they need to perform their task efficiently? Or do they need to wait on some other person to provide it to them at a time that is not suitable for them? Does the data come to them in the right format? Those are the questions you are seeing. So if you do a very detailed analysis of your process, you'll be able to identify all this. Is this process performed at various locations? You might need that information for your deployment so that you know that when you are deploying, you are deploying at multiple locations. You know that when you are training, you have stakeholders that are resident in multiple locations and you need to factor that in, in your training plans. So processes depict manual repetitive tasks that can be automated, yes. So when you look at your processes, you begin to identify some tasks. Like I mentioned, the example I gave was that report that they need to export and then begin to manipulate manually. But let's, so there's something I want to show you. Um, in our training, Harry, I don't know how much time I have, but please stop me 10 minutes into this. I know we don't have so much time. So, sorry, I want to open this Excel sheet that I have here. So basically what I want to show us is that, um, let me start this way. I have, we do in front of consulting, you are where we do coaching and mentoring. So we do have people that would book mentoring sessions and tell us, oh, I need to prepare a requirement. Ah, they said we should prepare, I should prepare a requirement. I need to give it to them tomorrow. I need to give it to them today. And I'm like, okay, take deep breath, calm down. You cannot just wake up and jump into preparing requirements. You need to understand um, functional requirements. I would explain what that means, please, in a minute. You can't jump into documenting requirements. There, you, need to, you need to have a method. You need to have a work approach. And we'll get to the work approach very soon. But before you jump into documenting your requirements, there are some, you need to understand the needs. You need to do what is called the needs definition. Understand what the needs are. And your process analysis can help you. You need to identify who your stake, there are some things that will precede your requirement documentation. And if you always start with your process, first of all, you engage, you try to identify the stakeholders that are involved. You may not identify all the stakeholders. But when you begin to do your process analysis, you will begin to identify more stakeholders that you may have missed at the beginning. And then you know you need to involve them and try to engage them in the whole initiative. So most BAs just jump into documenting business processes. They get into a project, they tell them, oh, your job here, we are trying to implement a new system. You need to design, you need to document the um, requirements. That is what they are told. They are told the document requirement. Documenting requirements is the end goal, right? 
That is the goal. However, you need to have a process to get to your end goal. So what process, can somebody tell me what process they currently use in documenting their, in achieving their goal of um, documenting a complete and accurate, I know we have um, some practicing BAs in this session, people that have, because in the forms we collected, we, um, there is a mix, some people have started practicing business analysis, while some are not practicing business analysis yet. So with a show of hands, how many practicing business analysis do we have here? And I want you to just tell me what process, how do you arrive at your business requirement document? How do you, how do you arrive at that goal of documenting a requirement? And BRD means business requirement document. Different people may call it different things, but basically it should, um, it should contain your business requirement, your solutions requirement. And your solution requirement is broken into two. Um, the functional requirement and the non-functional requirement. Okay, somebody's conduct a go C. So when you conduct that go C, what are the what do you um, collect? What information do you collect from the go is conduct a go C? Yeah, KG, thank you. Some people call it RFD. Yeah, Jibola says she conducts a workshop. Good. What are the output? Um, Jibs, what, 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 do you, what information do you get out of your workshop? Brainstorming sessions, yes. So that's an activity. What output do you get out from there to help you document your requirements? Okay, while I'm waiting for the feedback, thank you very much. I love the workshop and the brainstorming because in those sessions, you can use those sessions to elicit your business process. And then when you elicit your business process, because you want to follow a guideline, you want to follow a process, you want to make sure that your process, your, your requirement is complete and is accurate, right? So you want, to pro, you want to follow a process that would ensure you achieve that goal. You conduct interviews and questionnaires, you use questionnaires, thank you very much. So once you are done with that, for me, and I'll tell you what I do, I would conduct workshop, brainstorming session, interviews, questionnaires, depending on the techniques that is suitable for my project. I may not have to use all these elicitation techniques. I pick what, what is appropriate because I've done some context analysis. I understand my stakeholders and all that. And then when I'm done, I document my process. From my process step, I can begin to write a use case. I'll use a use case only if it's um, it's technology, if I'm trying to write requirements for um, a system, an IT system. Then from my process, from my use case, I can then begin to write a solutions requirement. Somebody asks what a functional requirement is. So a functional requirement represents, um, is, you, is you writing what you want a system to do for you. You are trying to describe a functionality you expect from a system. That's a functional requirement. So a requirement is what you want, what you require. Now, functional on the system is you want that system to perform, to be able to perform that. I'm just trying to use a layman's term to help to make sure you understand what a functional requirement is. So this is an example of a process, um, of a manual process. So we have a client that um, is into clothes selling, they sell clothes on... Um, um. Hello, okay, sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. It's really tiny. And I've not even started. Give me five okay. minutes. Okay. <laughs> so you have um, a customer that has a walk-in shop, a brick and mortar shop. And um, so people can come in, can walk into the shop and make and buy, pick a, a cloth they need and buy. Or they can call in and say, oh, I need this particular cloth. And if they know the, 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 the cloth or the product they want, they are able to package it and send it to the customer. But now this customer wants to have an online store. They want to digitize their business. So first of all, we needed to document their manual processes first. So the manual process here, and the name of the process is order to cash. And then we also put in the names of the people that are responsible. We didn't, I didn't go into details in this template because we don't have so much time here. So what I did was to write in the manual process first. Then based off on the manual process, I begin to identify use cases. 
Now, manually, the customer may walk in or call into or call the customer care unit to say, I want this product um, and pays for the product and it's shipped to the product. But now, because we want to digitize this business, we need to move that um, activity to the customer. We want them to go online, create an account and be able to select the product they want and pay for. So from analyzing this process and understanding the goal, which is an e-commerce website, I started writing my requirement. I first write a use case because I want to be able to define the use case of every stakeholder. So there's a use case for the customer. There's a use case for the admin person that will be responsible for putting the product online. There will be a use case for the um, customer service um, officer that might be in charge of taking those orders online and planning to send them out using DHL or whatever um, dispatch tool or dispatch, whatever delivery mode, mode they want to use. So first of all, I then come up with my use case and I didn't go into detail. So, so the first use case I will have here is rather than the customer calling the manual process, I want them to create um, an account online. I want them to log in online and I want them to select products. Now I have my use cases. I will drill down my use cases even further to begin to write my requirements. So one requirement I'll write from the create account use cases, the system shall allow a new customer to create an account on the system using a unique email and password. Again, I can use my process analysis and use case to write user stories, which I have here. So as in non-registered customers, I want to create an account so that I can securely log into the system. That's my user story. And you will see that I broke down my user story into the who, the what, and the um, and the why to make it easy for me to think through that. Because I know a lot of us struggle with writing user stories because, and we miss out some of the what, who, and, and, and why. And we know those are the three parts of a user story that really make it a complete user story. And then I can still, on the basis of my, from my process here, which is calling customer. I have the use, I have, I've, I've traced it to a use case. I've traced it to a functional requirement. I'm able to also write a user story. Again, note that in all your projects, you might not be expected to write a functional requirement and a user story. So depending on what, I'm just trying to show you that you can use your process step to guide you to achieve all these deliverables. These are different deliverables you would might be required to come up with as a business analyst or, or as a business analyst on your project. User stories. You can also use it to write your test cases because at the end of the day, you want to be able to test that every requirement, every need of your customer was met by the new tool. So you want to verify that a new customer can actually create an account before proceeding to payment. And this, you can go on and on. My, we don't have so much time, but this is, and we do this in detail in our 12 weeks training. We show you, we set you up for success. We equip you with the knowledge and the tools you need to be successful. We don't have our students that we train come back to say, ah, I don't know how to write requirements because we've taught them how to do it methodological. Like there's a method, there is an approach, there is a process. And the same thing applies to every work you would do as a business analyst. Um, I would stop here. So let's quickly jump to work approaches and methodologies. So, like I said, as a business analyst, before you jump into doing, you need to sit down and think of the goal, the destination. What is the direction I would use to get to that destination? And when you see organizations map or define their processes, that is what they also do. They sit down to say, what is the goal? What's the objective? What's our final destination? We want to create value. Then they come back to identify the steps they would take to create that value. That is what you see reflected in your business processes. Let's continue. So what is the methodology? It is, I'll, I'll move it a little bit faster. You can bear with me because we need to take questions to make sure people understand. So please keep your questions coming in you um, will treat them all. A methodology is a system of practices, techniques, processes, rules that people in a particular discipline will use. It's usually discipline specific. Can someone give me an example of methodologies or work um, approaches, frameworks they, are, they know they have used? Um, please, I need 
Agile, thank you. Good, Fumi, I love that. That's a lean process. The DMAIC, yes. That's waterfall, good. That is an approach, good. The IPAP, I am not sure I know what that is. Um, if you can give us a, so yes, those are methodologies. Those are work approaches. And can somebody tell me why FM good, COVID for good? Can somebody tell me why organizations take pain to define those methodologies? Why do you think most big organizations, why do you think they take time to go define methodologies that will guide their work? I'm not getting any answer. In fact, this answer, I want somebody to unmute. If you know, if you have an answer, to avoid waste, thank you. To standardize the process, to prevent trial and error. Thank you very much, Tosin. Increase work efficiency, sustainability. Thank you very much. And every business analyst should take note of this. This is why in any initiative, anything you are working on, you should have a methodology. You should have an approach to your work so that you, don't want, you want to avoid rework. You want to make sure that you are hitting targets. You don't want to wake up and do things shabbily, randomly, and hoping you will achieve your goal. Good, you want to, be, make, you want to make sure you, you reproduce that result. Basically, organizations just want consistency. They, want, they, 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 they define work approaches. They've tested it and they've proven this work. And if you follow this system and process, it will give you an end goal. Bumi, you are making, um, you are using your annotation. Can you, can you stop, please? I'm not sure I can take this out. Uh, yeah, somewhere on the, where, something about viewing your screen. There's a place where you can um, yeah. take that out and disable. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you very much. Yeah. So Bumi, just make sure you're not, um, your, your annotation is not on, so you don't distract all that. So basically, and as, a, as, as any, in fact, not just as business analysis professional, not just as a business analyst, in any work we do, if you are here on this call, please go back and try to think of, of having a work approach that helps you get a consistent outcome. When you do the initial draft, it may not be, it may not be all perfect. As you work with that process, you understand and you, be, you continue to improve it. That's what you call the continuous improvement, the plan, do, act, check. It helps you in defining processes. So as professionals, there are many ways to deliver value, yes, broadly speaking, but you need to, and you need to um, make sure you're using the right principles, the right frameworks, the right standards, the right processes. It helps you guide your work and helps you achieve success. And it also helps make your stakeholders know that you know what you are doing. You are not just coming to do work anyhow. So we're going to look at, the, um, we're going to just look at very few um, frameworks or methodologies that we would use or that we we'll encounter as business analysts. So if you're a BA working in a project environment, you will typically work with the project management life cycle. And basically you have the initiation, you have the planning, you have the execution, you have monitoring and control, then closure. You have the project manager, the project coordinators working in this space, right? Um, you have them working in this space, but you as the BA, you also have your responsibility. So you need to understand these phases and you need to know what deliverables you are, that is expected of you per time. For example, if you are working during the initiation as a BA, it might not be your responsibility to come up with a project charter. Sometimes it may be. I work as a project manager and a business analyst. So depending on the complexity of the project and the resources required, I'm responsible sometimes to prepare the project charter. And sometimes my, if I have a PM on that project, that's their responsibility. So you need to be clear on what your responsibilities are, what your deliverables are per phase of the project. And you are working to make sure you meet quality, you, you, you produce quality deliverable for each of those phases of your project. So you have the project charter, you have the business case. Most times the, the, the business analysts will work on the business case and the business case will usually precede the project charter. That's what tells, um, you've done some analysis to understand that if the organization is going to invest resources in this work, we need to give them return in investment. So those are, you, you do some analysis, some pre-work that helps the organization decide and approve 
the project, the project to go on. And they, they approve for the project to proceed using the project charter. You can also define your project scope at this point because you need to understand what you are working with. And then when you proceed to the planning phase, the PM is also producing his own PM plan. And you as the BA, you are working on your business analysis plan. Can somebody give, tell us examples of business analysis plans? I know, I know, I'm not sure if Harry talked about it. No, we've not talked about it. It's not, we've not discussed it here. But there are various business analysis plans you would produce as a business analyst. Can I have one or two examples? So while I'm waiting for that example in the chat, as business analyst, stakeholder analysis, um, no, that's not a plan. That's a deliverable. But it's, yeah, that's a deliverable that would not come under your planning phase. Is I need the name of the plan that would help you make sure you get your, your um, um, stakeholder plan. So a business analyst does not work in isolation. If you are working on a project and you have a project plan, you must make sure that your BA plan aligns with your project plan. Yes, you have to begin, you look at the project plan, um, the, that's a project manager's document to come up with your plan because the timing and everything is governed by the PM's plan. You cannot have your, 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 your project management plan cannot be north and your BA plan is south. So you need to make sure it aligns. And you also work with your PM, you collaborate with your PM. So we would have um, a business analysis elicitation plan. I'm giving, I, I didn't get the right feedback. You have your business analysis elicitation plan. You have your business analysis governance plan. You have communication plan. How would you collaborate? You need to plan how you would collaborate, how you would identify your stakeholders before you begin to analyze and manage them, right? Requirement management plan, thank you very much. So those are the plan and you would do them during the planning phase here. So once you have your plan, under the execution phase, you begin to execute. Now you are trying to identify your stakeholders, you are analyzing them, you are engaging them based on the plan you have defined. And we all know that plans are not cast on stone. So when you get, when the rubber meets the road during your execution, you will come across more information. You need to go and update your plan. So you don't do your plan once and for all. Your plans are iterative. You, as you learn, as you get more information, as you elaborate progressively during your project, you still go back and update your individual plans. So during execution, you are now actually acting out or working out the plans you, 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 you defined. And of course you are updating your plans and you are still working. Your, your current state document, it can be a whole, there are different things that could come out of your current state document. You are also working on your future state document, performing gap analysis. And you also continue during your monitoring and controlling, between execution, monitoring and controlling, you, you are doing a whole lot of things. You are doing change requests. If your requirements are changing, you are documenting your requirement also during your, your execution. I didn't note it here, but please note that. You are, you, are, you, are, you are eliciting, you are now doing the actual elicitation. You are modeling your requirement. You are writing your requirements document during your monitor, um, execution. So monitoring and controlling before you go live. You are doing, um, if you have change requests, you are accommodating those change requests. You are performing um, the change impact assessment to know if you are going to accommodate this change. You are writing test cases. You are preparing your cutover plan. You are preparing to go live, right? And at the end, when the project manager is also pro, um, preparing his project closer report, as a BA, I have been I have, I have, during this phase. I usually write what is called the operations handover report because my 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 team only works on projects. So before I hand over the system that I have helped build, I didn't help build, I helped build it, yes. I didn't do the actual building, but I provided requirements. I tested those requirements. Now I need to hand it over to the operations team. I need to document what happened, the key happenings during the project, if there were defect logs, if there are key issues I need um, operations to be aware of. I could also have designed a support model during that project and I need to, articulate all this and hand it over to the project. There's also what you call lessons learned. On that project closure, you do your lessons learned. What did you learn? What did you do well during the project? What can you do better? What didn't you do well? And what lessons are you learning from all that? 
So another methodology we work with as BA is a software development life cycle. And this is if you are working, if you are working, if you're trying to develop um, a system, a technology system, this is applicable. If you're trying to design your process, this is not an applicable process you should be using. So as business analysts, you should also know the right methodologies to use part time. And that's why when you understand the goal, the vision of your stakeholders, you should sit back and articulate the step by step you would follow to help them achieve that goal. So here you have analysis, you have the design, you have the build. You, so first of all, you analyze. That is when you are gathering your requirements, understanding the needs, articulating it. And then you have your business requirement, your solutions requirement. If it's an agile environment, you have your user stories. Then you go on to design. In design, you are working with the developers now. They are trying to replicate design the requirement. They are trying to understand more and do a, an architecture, like a mock-up of what the solution will look like. And at this point, you are also doing, thank you very much, Harry. You are doing further elicitation and all that. So the next phase is to build. And when the development team is building, you are preparing your test plans. When you get to the testing phase, you might have to wait for the developers to perform the unit testing, the integration testing, the system testing, you, the BA, might have to perform regression testing, but typically you will do your user acceptance testing. And then for deployment, there are some activities you need to be aware of as, um, um, as a business analyst. The go, no go, the cut over, the training plan, the communication, the, um, your go live communication. You need to communicate to your stakeholders that you are going live. The training plan, you need to train them and all that. Support model, how do you want to support this solution when it goes to production, which is what usually happens here. Again, if you join our 12 weeks training, for every deliverable you need to prepare at each of these phase, we have templates. And our project, our capstone project, we'd walk through each of these phases and the key deliverables you need to be aware of as a business analyst. We don't have all the time to do it here. Um, so this is, I, I just loved this, um, this image and I, I wanted to share it here. You can get it online. I, I got this online. It's again, this, um, telling you what happens. So what I love about this was that it picked the software development life cycle and then it expounded it. You are not seeing analysis here. You are not seeing all those things I showed you the other place, but this is you, somebody taking the software development life cycle and tailoring it to their own need. And that is what you will do. You will pick up the project management life cycle. You pick up the software development life cycle. You have to tailor it to the needs of the organization. You have, there are guidelines, there are principles. Nobody says you should take it. You should copy and paste and use it as is. Um, Harry, there are questions in the chat about the 12 weeks training. So um, now- Yeah, we're gonna take that. Okay, let's look at the typical business analysis approach. Again, as a business analysis professional, you do different things. Nothing is cast on stone, but you need to sit down and think of what your goal is and how to achieve it. So this is a typical business analysis approach. This is not um, a one, it is not what you should use all the time, but it's typical. First of all, you need to understand the need, right? There's a need, right? That triggers the business analysis work to happen. You need to understand your stakeholders and what their needs are. You need to identify the root problem. Remember that your needs can be a problem or an opportunity. So if it's a problem, you need to identify what are the root causes. If it's an opportunity, you need to validate that there is an actual opportunity before you get the organization to invest in pursuing that opportunity. You do a lot of market research, benchmarking and all of that. Then you now move on to the next phase is to identify the needs. Now you need to articulate it, right? And the requirements the high level needs, the requirement and the solution options because there's a problem, that's why they called you, they need you to help them um, provide a valuable solution. So at the end of the day, you would come up with, that, with solution options. And as BA, remember, you're not supposed to just always give them options. Don't tell them that this is, um, this is what will solve your problem because you need to do, um, you need to be aware of the different ways you can solve problem and do some analysis to pick the right problem that suits the budget, the needs of the organization. And it's also important to know that do nothing is an option. Like you might do all your analysis and tell the organization, you know what, if we invest a lot of money here, 
We're not going to get so much value. And this problem is not a showstopper. We can ignore it. It's also an option. Now you evaluate and make your recommendation after you've done your solution option because the business, they are trusting you as a knowledgeable, as a consultant, as an expert. You need to be able to take that trust they put in you, do detailed analysis and recommend solutions to them. Oh yes, you can do this. This is your business case. Yes, this is um, the business case process. And then when you have made your recommendation and the business approves that you should go ahead and implement, the solution. So if it's a software development, if it's a software project, you will typically follow the software development life cycle. That is what I have here. Now, let's look at um, another process. If you want to do a needs analysis, so we looked at if you're working in a project, you will follow the software development life cycle. So if you are, if you are a BA that you are an operations analyst, so basically you help to understand problem and solve them. That is your work. We have BAs that work in that space. And because they are good problem solvers, they are critical thinkers, you know, they are used in that space quite a lot. So if you are performing a need analysis, this is another typical approach you could use. You conduct elicitation, you analyze your notes after you conduct your elicitation. You, just, you try to articulate your understanding of that problem. Then you go back and validate your understanding because there could have been some misunderstanding during the course of that um, conversation. So you need to validate whatever information you get from your stakeholders before you continue to do extra work on that information you are working on. So if you validated the problem, you now go in spending time to do your root cost analysis, do your five why, you know, you are trying to do some cost analysis, some timing analysis around your problems. You confirm your true causes and then you identify and recommend Possible solutions with S. Please, um, there should be an S here. Always recommend solutions. You don't point, as a BA, your job is not to tell the management this is a problem. You're also supposed to tell them what the possible solutions can be. One last approach I would show here is an OCM approach. And OCM is your organization and organizational chain management because we know we have business analysis professionals that also work in this space. You are not only managing the people side of change, you are also managing the, um, sorry, you're not only managing the product side of change, which your project management and your software development life cycle takes care of. You also want to, you also want to carry along the people, you want to manage the people side of change and you do that with your OCM strategy. So here, um, this is another process you can use. Remember, I'm not giving you this process to take and run within your organization. You should tailor it to meet your need. Typically, you should, when you have a work approach, go online and look for methodologies, approaches, people that have done similar work have used. And over time, as you gain experience, something you've done before, you know what you, you know the approach you've used, you might then need to tailor it to the, um, the current context and use it and, and, fly and work with it. So basically, all I've tried to do in this presentation today is to tell, is to help us understand that, to help us understand the value of process, why we should understand processes, why process modeling and analysis is a key foundational technique every BA must have in their toolkit. I tell everyone that cares to know that my best go-to technique as a business analyst is process modeling and analysis. And people that know me, we know I always preach it. And I, I, I've demonstrated how I've, how I've used it to come up with my requirements document, my use case, uh, my user stories, my test cases. You can never go wrong with processes. So I will stop there for today because somebody has been hounding me to stop. <laughs> and thank you guys for listening. So we can take questions now if we have. Thank you very much, Oge. You've been, that was really insightful. Thank you. Do we have questions? Pretty much what I see in the in the chat box is that people were very, they were, they were they were carried along, they enjoyed it and they had feedback, but not many questions. The questions that I found in the chats, pretty much, I think you also answered them was please, what do you mean by functional requirements, which you already addressed? And then also someone asked that can the template be shared? you know, the templates. And you also address that saying that the templates will be shared with those people that are, right? I don't know, you might want yeah. to talk about that. that the, the templates, sorry, um, 
we are doing this retraining here to help the BA community, but mm -hmm. there are some resources we can't share. So that templates are only for our students, our internal students, people that subscribe for our 12 weeks training or people that sign up for our coaching and mentoring services because people would come to say, oh, they are trying to write a requirement. They don't know how to. So those are the things we use. We equip, well, those are our work tools, the things we use to help them to achieve their goals. So sorry, we can't share it. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, and they were also asking about the pricing and everything, which I'm, I, um, I think Emmy also mentioned here that it would be shared at the end of the session, right? Yes. So Harry will be walking us through that very quickly. So if we don't have questions or we're still thinking of the questions, no. I would like to hand it over to Harry now to go over the 12 weeks training. Harry, are you ready? Uh, yes, I am ready. Um, thank you again for that. That was insightful. Um, thank you for the detail. Uh, um, I just want to say that, you know, although I work with Oki, but um, this, what she gave out cost uh, thousands of dollars you know, <laughs> if you go to certain sessions. So uh, it might come as free, but um, there's a lot of um, gold, not just gold dust, but the gold stones and rocks in what she just said. So I would advise that you go to our YouTube, um, subscribe, um, rewatch these videos. There's a lot of nuggets you can take for your organization. Remember we said business analysis is not just about a job title or a profession. It is a way of thinking. In what she said today, you could apply it in any industry, baking, healthcare, as a doctor, uh, insurance, uh, mining, you know, people have problems and people fix these problems using several methodologies and she touched on some of them. Now, quickly, I want to do um, uh, a quick poll. You can and, yeah. Harry, there's a yes? question. Somebody is asking a question in the chat. Let me quickly address that. Why you prefer to share your screen? Go ahead, please. And let me answer the question. So she's asking, how long does it take to map a process? I would say from experience, it's not cast on stone. It depends on the organization. It depends on the availability of your stakeholders because you cannot, um, you can do some document analysis with um, the information available to you. Maybe there are some, they've documented their processes already. And maybe when you, somebody mentioned a go see, you might want to observe them to document, um, to do a, an initial draft, but you would need them to sit with you to describe what they do. That would help you now flesh out any information you didn't capture during the go see or during your document analysis. So it depends on the scope of your, of your, um, of the process you are trying to model. It, it depends on the scope and the availability of your stakeholders and some other things that you can't um, put a number to. For example, when um, I did um, a business process reengineering project, it took us over a year because it was, the organization had over 200 sub processes, which we had to map um, the current state and then of course take time to analyze and improve it. So it, it depends. There's really um, no time. I can't give you a time, Damilola. I hope that answers your question. Again, if you are working on a project, you just want to narrow zero down on the, on the process that is in, on the um, process that is in scope of your work. You don't want to map the entire organizational process, right? Hope that answers your question. You're welcome. Uh, thanks, Oge, for that answer. For those that have questions, please put it in. The immigration program will start at 2.30 Halifax time. I'm seeing that, but, you know, before we go there, let me just, um, I am. I, I just shared a link. I just want to have an idea of. Please click on that link, and in one word, just tell us um, what you think about the session so far. So I just shared a link. Click on that link, and just type in what you think. Because we appreciate your feedback. I want to ensure that each of our um, presentations and what we what we are actually giving out you know, are meeting your needs. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, that's coming up. When I yes. Mary, share your screen when it's coming up. We can't see it. Oh, you can't see it. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, I'm sorry, what's going on? Okay, this one. Yeah. Yeah, so we are getting, I don't know how to, okay, present this. Yeah, so yes, insightful, super fast paced, informative, eye opener. Insightful seems to be taking the lead. So that's good. Um, uh, amazing, fantastic, enlightening, stimulating, loaded, awesome, perfect. You know, it seems like you guys want us to do another match of free of freebies, but uh, I don't think um, I'm tempted enough. It's been very insightful, impactful. Insightful just seems to be a very, um, um, a very big word, which is please be tempted though. Ah, uh, no, to take it, <laughs> do a lot more to tempt me to do that. You know, so uh, that's a lot of. <laughs> We've given out a lot of freebies that we are personally paying from our pocket from. For, for example, the Scrum classes, the free Scrum classes that we are offering and the certification is all free from our pocket. So it's just a way of giving back. But those things cost money. And um, I don't want to talk about, uh, I mean, how much in dollars August time is per hour. So that just gets to, goes to show you that uh, we are doing a lot. So but thank you so much. Um, the second poll I want to take is to thank you so much for all. Yes, yes, women are taking over the world and I am behind them. So it's good. So um, I want to share a second poll. And in that poll, we have a couple of topics that we want to talk about in our next class. But we wanted your input. So uh, we just want to know what you think. It might not be everything that we'll talk about, but we just want to have an idea of what you you prefer we talk about. So I'm sharing that right now. So go to that link and please let us know what you think we should, an idea of what you think we should talk about next week. We'll talk about more things, but we just want an input, maybe a slide or something. So please go there and um, yeah, I think I should not have asked put data analytics. Oh yes, it's going up. You can see my screen, I guess. Yes, so I'm seeing, uh, okay, considerations, yes, yes, data analytics seems to be moving up. Wow, process improvement. So I think the process analysis and improvement is a very, it's a very nice one. Yeah, please, let's just see, we want to see your results and, um, and, um, and what you think. Because at the end of the day, remember that business analysis is a mindset. So there are several angles, there are several facets of it. You know, like that process improvement is a very critical one. Every organization has set of activities that they take to achieve something. And so there are always processes to improve. So whether you're working on data, you are trying to select a solution, you're trying to implement a technology. Um, how do I get regular information of future Zoom meetings, yeah, just um, go to our social media and those, subscribe to them on LinkedIn. I shared the post, I'm gonna share it again. Subscribe to them and um, you would always get notification anytime we are, uh, I'm, I'm gonna share that again. So there's just no need to say too much. Let me share that again. Yeah, so, and you know why this poll is important? It's important because it's going to impact what we're going to talk about last next week. So uh, do not be shy. I don't know how many people have done it, but please do not be shy. We have 56 people that have done it. And on this Zoom call, we have over 200 people. So um, I'll just give a few more um, time, just a few more seconds for us to go to it. Please, what is the difference between Scrum class and the 12 weeks. Yeah, so what we are doing is that we have uh, several offerings. We don't have only one offering. Now in the 12 weeks internship class, we teach you the whole nine yards from implementation, Scrum, SDLC, um, the various business analysis activities, what is a requirement, how do you gather requirements, how do you conduct meetings, requirements modeling, what kind of, what's a requirements model? Um, process flow, process models, 
use case diagrams, um, state transition diagrams. Um, how do you improve a process? Some form of. You're not yeah. sharing your screen. I hope you're aware. I'm not sharing my screen. Uh, if you're reading out what we'll do, if you're reading out the curriculum, you're not sharing. No, 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 I know. I know. I'm not, I'm not doing that yet. I just wanted to give you a few times. So I think we have 62 people. We have actually 200 people on this call and we have 62. So I just keep, keep at it. I would, um, because later we are going to review this to decide what the topic next week will be. So I really appreciate our... Um, um, Harry, can you repost the link? They are asking for the link. What link, please? Which one? The one for this one, for the poll. Some people have, um, this chat have overridden it. Can you put it in the link again? Yes, I'm doing that right now for the poll. Yes, you have that now. Um, group, uh, Telegram group. I sent a link just now for... I will um, take care of that, Harry. Okay, great, 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 great. So, so we have process and data analytics to like seem to be, you know, taking up um, a lot of space, you know, and um, that's okay. That's okay. Please keep it going. We have 70 people now that have responded, but you know what? I'll just quickly do while this poll is going on, I'm watching. Oh yes. So process improvement has seemed to have um, taken over now, you know, so, but while this is going on, I will just quickly. Um, what am I going to do? I'll just quickly share a presentation that I think I want to talk about. Let me stop sharing my screen. And, uh, yes. So let's go now. I'm going to share my screen again because we have just a few. Yeah. So um, what we are have online again today is just to talk about um, testimonials and um, just talk about people that have attended our trainings before. Um, there are a few, um, 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 we just had to take just a few subsets because I don't have all the screen to display everything, you know, of um, the value that they've gotten. Um, people, I have no idea of BA at all, but can I be termed a certified BA personnel in just 12 weeks? Certification is different from um, experience and knowledge. You can know everything, but certain bodies certify you um, that you've passed their exams. Um, and one of them is IBA, the Certified Business Analysis Professional. Now we have a course on that, but I think um, what you are referring to is after you take the 12 weeks, you should be able to figure out your transferable skills and you should be able to handle a BA project end to end confidently. Confidently, you should be able to do that. For certification, you have to write an exam for that. But for knowledge and understanding, when you attend our 12 weeks, I can assure you, you are going to have that. At least that one I can assure you. If you put in the time and the energy. So we have uh, testimonials from our uh, previous clients and um, they've done, they, they are doing well in the industry. They've gotten their jobs um, and um, they are just happy with themselves. So several people want to do these things for different reasons. I want to move to a new career. I want a better pay. Uh, um, I want another kind of experience. So we've had a lot of people in different provinces and different parts of the world that um, have done, have done um, this. So, but I'll, I'll still come back to this, but I'm getting a lot of questions about the testimonials. Okay, yes. Are you unmuted? Do you want me to say something? Yes, please. No, I saw your hand up. Oh, sorry, no. Okay, okay, sorry. Okay, fine. <laughs> With BA with pre with 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 previous BA knowledge and twelve weeks, would it be safe to assume readiness for CBAP certification? Yeah, I would say you are. I would say like you are sixty to seventy percent ready, and the reason is because there is a book to read. There is a uh, business analysis book of knowledge to read, 
And in that exam, sometimes they ask questions from, from the appendix. So you might have all the knowledge. And BAs could be quite broad. So I would say you are like 70% ready, but you need to read. You need to go to that book. You need to read very well. Two, you need to answer questions. And why answering questions, sample questions is that they help you get into the mood of that exam and know how questions are asked. So that's very as the scrum training started. Yeah, so the scrum, the scrum, uh, people have been taking the scrum training and getting their certificates, but it's it has been for people that have gone to like our page. So it's uh it comes at a cost, but um um, people have been taking it. For those that have liked our pages and have made comments, they've won prizes. At least I know people have already started writing and gaining feedback on that. Now, um, Oge can display that later, but I will quickly want to move on to our offerings um, quickly on the business. You said? Yeah. Um, there are questions. No, go ahead. I think, go ahead with your presentation. We can add, if it doesn't address the questions, we can take it, but they are related. So go ahead. Yeah, so these are the um, things that we are going to do in our business analysis practicum, our curriculum. Uh, we're going to do introduction to business analysis. We've done just a very small part of it today. Um, or while we have been talking, we're going to talk about business analysis core concept. Now, we talked about that last week. If you were there last week, you worked on YouTube, you would remember that we talked about this. Uh, types of business analysis work. Um, we talked a little about that, especially in terms of processes today. We'll do business analysis plan. How do you plan for your business analysis work? Like they say, if you fail, fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. So planning is very key for any um, activity, but most especially for business analysis work. So these are the various categories of plans that you can have as a BA uh, is there a guaranteed job placement after 12 weeks? I think the only person that can guarantee you a job is, um, is um, I don't know. Yourself. Yeah, it's yourself. So, <laughs> yeah. but I can assure you, you may know enough to get a good job. So um, that one, I cannot guarantee, but to get to an interview, to be able to speak confidently and get a good job. Um, stakeholder and, um, and stakeholder management. So you understand stakeholders, what are their roles, how do you analyze stakeholders, and how do you engage them? Um, business analysis elicitation, blessing, thank you for that. Business analysis elicitation, um, how do you prepare for elicitation? In the first case, what is even elicitation? So, but I'm not going to talk about that. It's, it's going to be part of our um, practicum class. Um, how do you conduct elicitation? How do you confirm elicitation? How do you communicate business analysis information? The scrum part is confusing me. Okay, no problem. We'll address that later. You do need analysis. And in needs analysis, we understand what is the problem. What are the techniques for needs analysis? Um, root cause and fishbone, business cases, cause benefit, benefit analysis, solution options. Um, we'll also, elicitation is requirement gathering. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, requirements management. Uh, we'll talk about the IB requirement schema, documenting requirement. Is there still testimonial? Yes. Harry, can I say something? Can I, can I do you mind Wait a minute. that? I just wanted to... Oh, now, yes, you can. Yeah, so elicitation is not all about requirements gathering, please. Information gathering. Let's start first with gathering information. You know, there's this, there's this illusion, there's this craze around people studying business analysis, and it's all about requirements. It's all about requirements. It's all no. So elicitation, you are gathering information. You then need to go and analyze that your information to be able to begin to write requirements. In elicitation, you're understanding the needs. There are so many things that happen during elicitation. So Tosin, please, I need you to correct that impression. When you go to elicit, when you do elicitation, it's beyond requirement. Um, requirement is usually associated with um, when you are developing a software tool, right? However, you can also mention requirement for a process of business improvement idea. So I, I want you to take out that word requirement. 
you are gathering information, you are drawing forth information. That information can be translated to so many other things, even beyond requirements. So I hope that is clear. Harry, thank you, please proceed. Okay, so let's move on. I need to uh, make this a lot faster. So we'll talk about quality assurance. We'll talk about how to model your requirements using different modeling techniques, um, ERDs, data dictionaries, CIPOC, use case, scope diagram, concept diagram, wireframes using Figma. That's one of my most interesting parts. I love diagrams and pictures a lot and design. So we'll talk about the agile methodology or the agile delivery. Uh, where we'll talk about scrum roles, user story, story mapping, backlog grooming. Uh, yeah, backlog grooming, definition of done acceptance criteria, business process management. So we'll talk about process analysis, types of processes, process improvement, process engineering. Um, we'll also talk about frameworks. So we talked about a, a few of them today. Figma, yes, that would be, I love Figma. Thank you for that. Um, system development life cycle, agile, waterfall, project management, um, organization. So when people making comments are part of our clients and um, anyway, I don't want to go to, we are distracting me with the Figma talk. Yes, yeah, so organizational change management life cycle, business analysis life cycle, and there are other frameworks. Ogi talked about a few, but we'll go deep dive into them um, during the practicum class. Uh, pre-deployment activities. So, um, sorry, this is supposed to be post. Yeah, yeah, pre-deployment activities. Yes. So, um, how do you decide on if I, a project is supposed to go live? Um, what are the documents we are supposed to have before we go live? What are the structures we are supposed to have? That's why you have the support model. But I refuse to be tempted to deep dive into this. You get that during the practicum tools and you get tools. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, Visio, Figma, Jira. Then there are lots of templates. Uh, for a lack of space, we just put this here, but there are a lot of templates you are going to get. So I'm going to I'm going to allow um, one of our um, previous clients to just say a little bit before we proceed. Um, uh, we have one of our clients online. Please, if you can unmute yourself and just give. Um, just a short um, testimonial on how the class went when you attended it and the benefits. Okay, thank you. Our other, other students can also type in the chat. We don't have time to let everybody come online. So other training participants can also type in the chat for others too. Thank you, yeah. Jeep, take it away. Thank you very much for that opportunity. For me, I, 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 I'm really glad that I chose a career aid of for my learning journey. And um, it's, it's, it was a combination of many things, you know, speaking of mentorship, relationship, um, professional training, and even the hands-on experience. It was really, really, those were all the things that, you know, came together that connected and tied it up for me. I remember that, you know, during the class, it was super ex insightful. I had, I received excellent insight, excellent insight and, um, very useful information, which was really what I needed to, you know, for, for this um, BA, for BA job and all that. And, you know, the service was fantastic. All the information, everything that has been detailed here, you will receive. Why? Because for when it, what, during my own time, it was not even specified that we're going to have all those diagrams, visual things, um, um, capturing things, um, use cases. Those things were not even detailed when we were getting into it. It was when we entered that we realized that, ah, okay now. So all these ones are add on. So it was, it was an awesome journey. I enjoyed an excellent service and he really helped me cope. Harry and Oge, you know, they are always constantly and openly offering, you know, solid advice. And, you know, because they're very passionate about what they do, they will explain, you know, the logic behind the course whatever, all this, all these lines, they will explain the logic behind it and guide you on how to practically get this, uh, get things done using these things. And this has really helped me a lot. And it's, it will always help you to jumpstart and to, you know, to complete that starter, you know, that's, that's journey. You know, they are very much passionate about their students and they will always look out for, for, for you. The, I, I have experienced it. It's not just about doing the course and moving on. No, these guys, 
are there. You can call them not only that they will walk you through, they will walk with you through the journey and they are very driven. And this automatically impacts the students because they are very self-driven, they are driven in everything they do. It's just going to cascade down. And I can tell you that what personally I enjoyed more value than I personally think I enjoyed more value than what I paid and all that. So I guess it's, you will, I think that that's it. And I think everybody in my class also had the same experience and it has never changed. And we are friends, even afterwards, it's become a family and a journey. And I'm glad I did. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. That was uh, good. I And I can confirm that I, well, that's not healthy, but sometimes I get calls at 12 a.m. and like, oh, hi, what's going on? <laughs> Harry, I need to do this. Harry, I, Harry, I, I, need to, I need to understand that, you know. And I get calls from Nigeria, I get calls from Ontario, I get calls from Nova Scotia, I get calls from the US, different places, but um, it's mainly for us, it's mainly about passion. It's about growing the community. And, you know, if we can be here for, um, Random people. Yesterday, I was I was still on a call with um, a very close friend's friend, you know, just trying to you know demystify certain things. So it's the passion for us, you know. But you must also understand that um, um, these things take time, you know. So and that's why um, the practicum class is there. Um, Ogie, okay, quickly, you want to say something? There's this information yeah. here. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. Did you read that saying that we didn't post anything on LinkedIn about the? Yeah, I. So I responded to him. We, it is deliberate for now. We don't want to create confusion between the free and the um, paid one. But in this coming week, because we have one more session of the free one, we are going to post it out. And of course, we've been getting people signing up. So we're going to be putting out that information on the so on our social media platform for other people that are not part of this group to sign up. So um, I've answered that, but to him directly. Then I also want to say something in addition to the feedback that the truth is that um, the training is not just 12 weeks and go and buy. People do remain. When we have free practical, when we have um, real life project, like remember we are a consulting firm. When we have project, people do join in and get hands-on experience that even kind of reinforces what they learned in class. And you can come back and come back and join other training sessions we have. Probably during the training, you didn't attend a class or something happened, you didn't get all the information. You want to come back and grab that information. Our doors are always open. Okay. Uh... Yes, yes, thanks, thanks everybody. Um, for those that have um, certain kind of questions, um, someone sent something about Instamelta payments, please send us an email at info at franoff.com. Yeah, but we have a basic training and that basic training is exactly what you're experiencing right now. And if the basic can, you know, um, be this insightful or beneficial, you can imagine what the standard and platinum is. Um, and for the basic, we you just have the uh, free training, the four weeks free training, a replay um, on our social media platforms, quizzes. For those in Telegram, you're getting some of the quizzes, access to our online videos, access to the Scrum Guide, which those um, that um, won have gotten access to some templates and some resources. Uh, for the standard, the standard is just a practicum. So let me let me really explain that. But before I explain that, I will talk about the premium first before I talk about the standard. In the premium is the 12 weeks we've talked about. So that one is a combination of knowledge and understanding. So knowledge and practical. So we are going to teach you everything you need to know as a PA. Then we are going to try out certain case studies. We have several case studies. Usually we pick one, but if we have students that are very enthusiastic and they want to, maybe with their other classmates, they want to do other case studies. After the one that we recommend, they can go on because there are lots of case studies to try out. So, uh, but for the standard, the standard is focused mainly on the practical, just the practical. So in the standard, we are not talking about the theories. We are not talking about the knowledge. We are not breaking anything down. It is just, we have a project, let's do the project. So 
if you feel that, if you know that you've not gotten, because to be very frank, you would, there's so much work to do in the projects that there will not even be time to start explaining anything. Nobody's going to have the time to explain because now we are working on the project. And some of these projects are real projects. So it's, um, I want to emphasize that they are not just fictitious projects. So we have real projects that we are working on and some of them are real. Um, so there's no time to explain anything to you. We need to deliver. So you need to have that knowledge. That's why we advise for those that are, do not have the knowledge, do the premium where you have the knowledge. Um, but if you feel you have been working as a BA, but you just want some practicals, um, then you can do the uh, standard. Now, one other thing that we do, okay, so I, okay, you want to say something, sorry. Oh, I keep forgetting to put, no, it was when I, I, I have spoken already. Yeah, then we also offer coaching services. So in our coaching services, that's where we have, sorry. Yeah, before you move on to the coaching, it's important for viewers to know that this prize is valid just till next week, Monday, because this is a highly discounted prize. And because you have taken your time to join us for these four weeks, right? We love sharing our knowledge and you've come to oblige us, listen to us. We want to give you this benefit, but this won't be the real prize after Monday. And that's why we are waiting for you to take this advantage, we are putting it out to the wider group. Of course, we already have people that have signed up for the train that have been waiting for this to happen. So try to take advantage of this discounted price. The training is worth far more than this. Harry, can continue. Yeah, yeah, so we also offer coaching and mentoring. So for the coaching and mentoring, okay, please, can you display um, the, the slide for the Scrum? Um, the price they charge in the market and the price we are charging for, for it. So we also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And in our one-on-one -on -one coaching, we, um, um, let's say, for instance, you are, you are doing a particular work or you are thinking of a concept or you have a particular project, maybe in an NGO or wherever, and you need guidance. You are not sure what to do or you are getting confused or you are getting thrown up. We can, you can engage our services and we can, um, review with you and you know guide you on you know how best to uh, um, approach whatever challenge you have as a BA. But that's a one-on-one -on -one thing. It's not a training per se. It is just guidance and unholding, you know, just to make sure that um, some of those areas that you don't understand. I'm going to have a session this evening on um, one of our coaching clients, you know. So um, yeah, and for the certifications. Um, somebody was asking about this. I just quickly wanted to point this out. I don't take our time. So we have our um, Lean Six Sigma. Um, so the market price is, you can see what the market price is and you can see what we charge for it. So these are, we charge, well, it's actually 250, but we charge 150 USD. Um, okay, can you go to the second slide? This is for Lean Six Sigma. This is for the Scrum certifications. These are the market prices. You can see them. For the first one, the Scrum, let me take the Scrum Master. The second one is 450, but we charge um, um, 299 or 230 USD. So our trainings and our certifications come highly discounted. I doubt if you are going to get this price in the market. It's highly discounted. And for some of us that have won some of the uh, freebies, they've been able to do um, some of introduction to Scrum. Um, they'll be able to do introduction to Scrum and it's been really, 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 really very helpful. So my advice is go to our social media pages, like them, follow us. We are still picking people. We selected six people last week. Um, we are going to be, or this week, we are going to be letting you know, consider salary earners and extend to end of month. Yeah, I think that's what Oge said. She said end of this month. My mistake. No, so um, if you're interested, we are, and if you're interested in installment payment, you can reach out to us, them up, but you need to make a commitment to start with, then we can agree a payment plan. We stick to a maximum of three payment um, installments. So if you want an installment payment, you need to reach out to us, make an initial commitment for which some people have done already and they are registered for the training and then we can agree the other um the other part 
Yes, thank you again for that. So I don't know if anybody still has any question because I think if you have a specialized question, just send us an email and we can galaxy tab e eight point eight point inch twenty nineteen. Please, we'd like to see your name. I don't know why. I know you are not galaxy tab e anyway, but that's what it is showing. Um, Akin Sonia, you asked the question. Yes, Tina, just send us an email. Will you start from the beginning for the paid one? Uh, for the paid one, we 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 practically um I was like, what's that word that they use? Whatever your wishes would, your wishes are a command. So uh for the paid one, you definitely get the best, depending on um, so the paid one, we have classes, but we don't teach fast. We teach, it is paced, we follow the students and their understanding. So it's not like we are going to rush you. So yeah, um, what about you guys didn't post stuff? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, we're gonna post that on the stuff. Now, I don't know if there are any more questions so us to proceed. Somebody is um, asking, hold on. Um, please, is the 12 week training schedule date and time available? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're gonna stick to this time 12 o'clock on Saturdays. We're gonna have two class sessions, in-class sessions. But until we have the other um, class members together, that is when we would agree the other time. Cause we know we have people joining us from different time zones. So we try to be flexible and negotiate the timing that suits everyone. But the, the Saturday class is fixed, 12 o'clock Halifax time. Does the training include internship? Oh yes. Like I mentioned, we are a consulting firm. We provide consulting services to firm. We currently have two projects ongoing. One is um, helping an organization, a hotel um, owner select a hotel management system. And of course, we're gonna help him implement that. So the whole analysis of helping doing market research to know what um, the key players in the hotel management space, we are doing all that. And then we're gonna write gather information, write requirements that would help implement that too for him. So we do provide internship. We're not guaranteeing you a job, but we are guaranteeing you that we, we are going to equip you with all the information you need to ace your interview and hit the ground running when you start your job. So I hope that answers the information around um, internship. If you want to, if you want to pay um, in bits, reach out to us. We try to avoid that because it's a lot of admin and logistics. We'd rather you pay up front. But we also understand that this can be quite an investment for some people and you want to spread that payment. I'm interested and I would like, okay, yeah, please send us an email and we can talk about, we can talk more about that. Hi, am I still sharing my screen or you want to take over? Yes, you are still sharing your screen. I just wanted to show them the outcome of our our poll and we can call it a day um today you know we have the immigration um, oh yes yes so um yeah so i think we are uh, good for today you can also go to events bright um to check out the course and if you are outside canada um you can make payments on events bright um, if you have payment needs or you're having issues, please send us an email so we can address um, those payment concerns. Um, for those that are paying from Nigeria, yeah. if you have concerns, please send us an email at info at um, If you, just let us know if you're having issues, but if you are in Canada, you can pay using Interac. Uh, for those in Canada, you understand what I mean by using Interac. You can pay using Interac and I'll just post our email again. Please send us an email at info at franov.com. So we are having a session that is going to start, um, and we are going to be talking to an immigration consultant on uh, immigration to Canada. I just want to, let me, can I share that? Yes, immigration to Canada. I will advise that we all attend, and uh, because it's really going to, be insightful. It's going to happen in the next um, 30 minutes or a little shorter than 30 minutes. Um, if you can see my screen, this is what we're going to have. So we're talking about immigration options for foreign professionals to Canada, and we're having wisdom. Uh, 
that will be part of the uh, sort of is a registered and licensed immigration office immigration consultant not officer so thank you again for that and i think you can round up okay yeah so harry somebody else has a question here he says can you start with the the standard which is the 800 ca and updates for the second one so james how he, how it works like harry explained we start with the theory and that is the part people that subscribe for the standard will not be part of so if you are going to subscribe for the standard you are coming in six weeks later after we have started right and then you've missed part of the um you can't upgrade again at that point because you just follow to the end the part that you paid for so if you know you need to sit down and do a need analysis for yourself and determine what exactly you need because if you need um if you want to upgrade you have to start earlier than the eight weeks um, than the 800 the, the standard package for hope for those that have uh, payments that want payment plans please send us an email uh, because we might not be able to answer everything here so but you might have peculiar needs and you don't want to type it here send us an email and let's figure that out we are definitely going to attend to all your emails send an email to info at franoft and that will be done thank you everybody for attending and next week we are going to proceed with our next uh uh our next um class so um i would advise you to um try and show up on time and we'll be deep diving into process analysis and improvement because that won the day thank you everybody and um, okay if you have a last word you can take it and let's close for today yeah so for payment again just to write read that for payment you can if you are in canada you can go to um send us an interact However, if you're outside of Canada, you can use, um, there's a link, there's a payment link. And if you need that link, please, some people complain it's not working, but we checked and it's actually working. Let's know what are the concerns and we can help you. Mind sharing the recording if you have any. We're going to upload the recording on our YouTube page. So please look, at, if you're on our mailing list, be on the lookout, you'll get it. Matt, we don't share our slides. So, but if you, Every information we've shared, if you go back to the videos, you will get them. Hope that works for you. No, for the immigration, please remain. It's the same link. You don't have to leave. Just remain here. Yeah. So if you have any more questions while we are waiting, um, you can still ask your questions. And Harry and I, Harry, can just put on that. Um, um, okay, please. Um, you 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 will have to join some time before it is time. But we need to end this call and restart the link again, or else we cannot save our recordings. So we can't leave this continuously going on. 